Welcome to the Nicholas 11X12 technology. Today is a very special day for me. Why? Well, I'm looking at the MSI Z97X Power AC, extreme overclocking high and super motherboard. You get my point. This is a top of the line board from MSI. I'm really thrilled to bits here. This is a motherboard that makes an enthusiast's heart leap for joy. However, that joy costs about 360 to 400 US dollars. We'll see what's offered for the price. Thank you very much MSI for sending me this motherboard to review. So without further ado, let's take a look at what's inside the box. Of course the beautiful motherboard itself, lots of manuals, guides and even an overclocking guide. There's also another nice big guide on the features, also would look nice on a wall if you're into that. A pair of driver CDs, the I.O. shield with nice black padding on the inside that reduces EMI emissions, and the Intel dual band wireless AC 7260 Wi-Fi module that supports 802.11 ABGNAC and Bluetooth 4.0 including Bluetooth Low Energy and Bluetooth 3.0 Plus HS as well as with Intel Wide-Eye that's wireless display. The two antennas are included of course. Also included is a special overclocking fan stand to provide airflow to the VRM and memory modules when doing some extreme overclocks. An expansion bracket with two eSATA ports as well as a single Molex power connection. A Molex to two SATA power connectors to power up your external overclocking drives that you might use. To plug in your standard SATA drive via that bracket, MSI includes this eSATA to SATA cable. That's awesome really, however only one is included, I wish they'd include a second one. Six standard SATA cables are included, three of them with a 90 degree end. And since this is an OC board, MSI is so kind to also include this delete die guard. It looks very nice, is out of metal and serves the purpose of keeping your deleted CPU nicely and securely in place. Beware, deleting CPUs voids the CPU's warranty. Then there are voltage checkpoints cables, MSI ZM connectors, three SLI bridges, a USB 3.0 flash drive with drivers on it and SATA cable labels. A door hanger either saying busy breaking world records or out buying LN2. Nice and last but not least, a nice large case patch. So yeah, MSI includes a ton of accessories here, but at that price point you'd expect that. Now let's take a closer look at the board itself. But first, let's install the Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth module onto the motherboard so it looks more complete. On first sight, I honestly have to say, this X-Power AC motherboard is gorgeous. I really like the color scheme and the way this board is laid out. Right away, it's noticeable this is a high-end product with tons of features to offer. The black and yellow color scheme actually really stands out and it's great that MSI actually also has to offer graphics cards with that color scheme to match the colors of motherboard and GPU. The board is also a little bit wider than the majority of motherboards with 26.4 cm which complies with the EATX form factor. The PCB is extremely durable, no wonder since 8 layers are used here and the board also makes use of what MSI calls their OC PCB which means that's a tight weave fiberglass PCB with an increased humidity resistance as well as an increased ESD protection. Now let's find out how much extreme power is behind the board. Intel's flagship Z97 chipset is used here, which is being cooled down by this nice heatsink here. The MSI logo lights up by the way. In the CPU socket area are three big heavy heatsinks to cool down the VRMs. All three combined with a single heat pipe to increase cooling performance, but these aren't passive heatsinks alone, it's also a water cooling heatsink at the same time, which I think is very convenient. In terms of aesthetics, these heatsinks look really good in my opinion and metal screws are used here, no plastic whatsoever. The X-Power logo by the way lights up yellow. The Z97 X-Power AC makes use of a 16 phase digit all power design with military class 4 components. So we can expect real good stability here, especially when overclocking. Also as you can see, there's quite a lot of space around the socket for all kinds of cooling solutions. This is a board with the Intel LJ1150 socket that supports the Haswell, Haswell Refresh as well as Devil's Canyon CPUs. 4 DDR3 memory DIMMs that support dual channel, 32GB at max and frequencies all the way up to extreme 3300MHz at OC. As for storage connections, there are a total of 10 SATA 6 gigabit per second ports on this motherboard, which is quite a lot actually, but very good to have indeed. 
The six run off the Intel Z97 chipset, the remaining four of the third party as media ASM1061 controller. RAID 0, 1, 5 and 10 is supported. Also on board is an M.2 port that supports SATA 6 gigabit per second modules as well as M.2 PCIe modules with up to 10 gigabits per second and module lengths of 4.2, 6 and 8 centimeters. Keep in mind, the SATA 5 and 6 ports will be unavailable when installing a module in the M.2 port. As for the expansion slots, there are 5 PCIe 3.0 x16 slots and 2 PCIe 2.0 x1 slots. This board supports 4-way crossfire as well as 4-way SLI configurations and that's quite amazing. However, when running a single GPU configuration, use the second slot to render the bandwidth of X16. For a 2-way config, use the first and fourth slot for X16 and X16. For a 3-way config, use the first slot, the fourth and last one to run at X16, X8 and X8. For a 4-way config, you'd use the first slot, the third the fourth and the last one for an operation of X8, X8, X8 and X8. As for audio, the Realtek ALC 1150 codec is used on this board and with MSI's audio boost feature, the unamplified signal gets amplified by 2 amps and thanks to the Nip and Chemicon filtering capacitors, you get a nice amplified and filtered signal since the audio components are completely isolated from the rest of the board to avoid interference. The isolation also looks very cool aesthetically. Now let's take a look at how many fan headers are on this board. In total there are 7 and that's quite a lot. Here are the CPU fan 1 and 2 headers, there are the optional fan 1 and 2 headers, and last but not least the system fan 1, 2 and 3 headers. But now let's take a look at all the headers spread across the whole board. The chassis intrusion header, the MSI GSPI 1 to recover from bad boot RAM images and two USB 2.0 headers. The first, red marked one supports MSI Supercharger technology which provides quicker USB charging of smartphones or any other USB powered devices. These are the two front panel headers and two debug headers, JISP1 and JB1. Right here is the TPM module header and on the far left down here is the front panel HD audio header. I simply love the fact that there are two USB 3.0 headers, a basic one and an angled one. To power everything up here is the 24 pin power connection, the 8 pin ATX 12 volt power connection up here, as well as an additional 4 pin connection to provide even more power to the CPU for extreme overclocks. Also above the first PCIe slot is a 6 pin auxiliary power connection that serves the same purpose but for the graphics cards. That's all good here but the location of that connection leaves much to be desired in my opinion. MSI should have put that auxiliary connection somewhere down here because who likes having a cable there? Now let's take a look at the overclocking area of this motherboard. As you can see, here we have the classic OC Genie button we are used to see from MSI that automatically overclocks this system. Right beside are the power and reset buttons and the button with a flash on it is the discharge button. This one allows you to discharge the board by simply using the button instead of removing the CMOS battery. These two are the ratio plus and minus buttons to increase or decrease the CPU ratio. The other two buttons are the base clock plus and minus buttons to either increase or decrease the base clock frequency with up to 1 MHz steps. Also on board are voltage checkpoints and that's pretty much a must on an overclocking motherboard along with the debugging LED. Another thing I really like on MSI's boards is that after the post process the CPU temperature is displayed. Now let's get to these switches here. This one is the base clock step switch, which provides two steps, 1 MHz and 0.1 MHz for the base clock plus and minus buttons. On default it's 0.1 MHz. The next switch is the OC Genie mode switch that provides two overclocking modes, gear 1 and 2 for the OC Genie operation. Gear 2 mode basically allows OC Genie to overclock higher than with gear 1. The third switch here is the slow mode booting switch. It's used for extreme overclocking conditions with LN2 cooling solutions to boot at a stable processor frequency and to prevent the system from crashing. That's an awesome feature and super helpful. Now that's the PCIe C's fire switch which basically allows you to conveniently and directly control the installed graphics cards without removing the physical cards by enabling or disabling one or more of the four important PCIe X16 slots. The Z97X Power AC motherboard has two built-in BIOS ROMs labeled A and B. 
The default one is BIOS ROM A, and this switch allows you to switch between these BIOS ROMs. This for instance is a fantastic solution to recover a bricked BIOS, just in case that would happen to you for some reason. There also are two LEDs on board that display which BIOS ROM currently is in use. BIOS A, blue LED. BIOS B, green LED. Right here also is the so-called go to BIOS button, which obviously gets you directly into the BIOS. Once again, excellent high quality components are used all across the board, and just so you know, military class 4 also means this X-Power AC has passed MSI's burn-in test with a water-cooled overclocked CPU. By the way, this Z97 X-Power AC also comes with a feature called CPU over current protection. What this does is shut down your overclocked CPU if a failure is detected and prevents booting and protects other hardware from being damaged by simply disconnecting power to it. A red LED lets you know when this feature is active. Not to forget the circuit, humidity, high temperature, ESD, as well as EMI protections. Now let's move on to the back panel. Here's the PS2 combo port, two USB 2.0 ports, here are the two Wi-Fi antenna connections if you decide to use the included module, the clear CMOS button, four USB 3.0 ports, one gigabit LAN port powered by the Intel i218V LAN controller, two USB 3.0 ports, one optical SPDIF output, one HDMI output, and one DisplayPort output. Two more USB 3.0 ports, and last but not least, the gold-plated 7.1 audio jacks. The Click BIOS 4 is an awesome UEFI BIOS. Not only does it look good, but also is responsive, has good and useful features to offer, and overall is very easy to navigate through. However, that's what I'm used to see since the same BIOS, just with a different color scheme is featured on MSI's gaming series motherboards. The MSI Z97 X Power AC probably is one of the very best motherboards on the market right now. Sure, not in terms of price performance ratio, but technically when it comes down to features, possibilities, performance and overclocking abilities, pretty much a board every enthusiast dreams of. Although this board is targeted towards the overclockers, it's pretty much an all-in-one motherboard. Gaming, multimedia, overclocking, experiments, you can use it for everything if you're willing to pay that much money for a motherboard. To me, if that matters, of course, it's also aesthetically pleasing, a gorgeous board. The competition has strong boards to offer too, but they lack that extreme all-in-one usage possibilities. The Z97X Power AC runs perfectly stable with my Intel i7-4770K. This board indeed is an overclocking beast. Well, it has to be since it's also being used to break OC world records. I managed to overclock my i7-4770K to 4.6GHz within minutes without any problems. I applied 1.312V measured in CPU-Z. More on overclocking with this motherboard in a separate video, so stay tuned for that. I can definitely, definitely recommend the MSI Z97 X Power AC motherboard. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and visit nicholas11x12techx.com to see videos there earlier than on YouTube. Also say no to ad blockers in order to support me and to make future videos possible. Thank you.